All right, what's going on, guys? Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I'm at PAX East 2019 with Quentin from Elderwood Academy. Hey, guys. So, as you can see, there's a there's a handful of product here on the table, uh, but we're always looking at new products and all sorts of new stuff you've got going on. So, why don't you tell us what's new? What what's what's happening? Thanks, Ted. Um, yeah, we haven't made a mistake yet. I don't think, but <laughs> not, not yet. We'll give it time. Um, so, uh, we've got a couple of new things that are, are kind of rocking around at Elderwood, and one of the new things that are, they are brand new as of this month. Um, we've got miniature dice that are going with our uh, miniature hex chests. And for many of you who have been tracking us, it's like, oh, you guys had miniature dice before. And that's spot on. We've been working with Norse Foundry and still are with their Pebble line, which are their miniature 10 millimeter metal dice sets. And um, we recently had some new options that um, we had made, and um, they have our own company's font and logo on them, and um, uh, th these this particular kind of rainbowy one, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, has we'll, been... We'll bring it in and, and post it. All right. Cutscene. Yeah. Yep. End cutscene. Yep. yep. <laughs> um, is going to... Uh, they've been selling really well. Um, people really have been enjoying the, the flavor that they bring. Um, so these are like... I don't know. It's, it's a brand new thing for us, and this is our first... Um, we're not like a... We're not a dice company. We're, right. Sure. Um, this is kind of an accessory for us, even mm -hmm. though our products mm -hmm. are the accessories to the dice. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a new venture for us, and it was really important to us that when we brought these out, they weren't more mini dice. They were actually something that was new and unique. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we ended up going going for like our the own font that our, our company's designed. And um, so they're kind of Elderwood dice, not just any other dice. Yeah, and I, again, we'll, you'll see some of this when it's zoomed in here, but there's uh, four different sets. You've got kind of standard metallic colors. You've got kind of like a darker antique bronze and kind of a gold and a, like a gunmetal silver. And then this, again, if you're familiar with like a titanium finish, that kind of rainbow metallic. Uh, and you've got, again, like you said, you've got the Elderwood logo on the D6, on the, yep. on the 6 on the D6. It's all a custom font, so you can't get these anywhere else. Correct. Uh, and how much does can you buy just the dice if you want to just get the dice? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, so the dice alone are twenty five dollars for a set. Okay. Um, they are available on our website. They're also they just debuted at Emerald City Comic Con two weeks ago mm -hmm. and are here at PAX East. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, they're you know they they work with the minis, but they're sold separately, so there's no need to you, know, you can mix and match as you choose, or if one speaks to you and the other doesn't, uh, that's your choice to pick what you want. Um, but yeah, the new finishes, these are, um, uh, these are, they're, I think it's called a rolled finish and it has kind of a more antique -y feel to it. Yeah. It's uh, definitely not a bright polish. It's also not like a brushed look. It is, um, they look like they've been through battle and, um, yeah, you, can even, you can see some wearing kind of on the edges. It looks like almost, uh, yeah, the, the edges end up with kind of like a, a brighter look and, mm -hmm. the, where the, the middle looks like a little bit more like almost tarnished, even though that's, that is the intended part of the finish. Um, definitely gives a, a I don't know, similar to the way that like our spell books really speak to the arcane sense of the of the objects in your game, they, mm -hmm. these also speak to a little bit of like you know having a archaic feel to them. And uh, I mean, I know we talked a little about it off camera, but is there the thought about possibly down the road going for new designs and maybe even a standard size set of dice? Yeah, th um, there certainly are. Um, again, the the primary what thing that we're doing at Elderwood. Uh, you know, we work with the dice, mm -hmm. not on the dice. Yeah. And, um, but we also, you know, this has been an interesting experiment and it's been fun to get, get feedback from our customers and kind of hear about these. And again, some of these have been very popular and based a little bit on that, it's, it is likely that we'll see some more dice projects down the line. And, um, but again, the, you know, the, the fundamental thing that, that we're doing at Elder was like, we're trying to add fun to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, sometimes you lose sight of that, but we try to like really stay to that core. And for us, what that would mean is if we're adding more dice as an option for customers, we don't want to just add the same dice that exist on the marketplace. We'd want to make sure that we're adding something that is um, new and unique. And, um, you know, one of the companies I really admire in the dice space is Q Workshop. Uh, not just because they're cute, but... Um, yeah, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I really admire that their dice are uh, are very artistic. Mm -hmm. And so, like in the same way that I would want to add something that is new and unique to the to the marketplace, they are doing exactly that. So 
Um, I don't think we would rush a dice project through. I don't think it's, you know, we're going to pull the trigger and, and order dice that, you know, already exist. It's like, you know, we'd want to get something made that has the right artistic feel sure. that creates, you know, speaks on kind of the aesthetic sense that Elderwood has, but also to what our customers are interested in and something that hopefully is not represented in the marketplace either. So aside from DICE, which is, again, like you said, maybe only the past two weeks, there's some couple, uh, some other new things that you might not realize are new because it's on products that already exist, but there are new options available now. Yeah, um, that's a really good... Uh, so uh, we've been talking a little bit about the foils, and um, this spellbook, so this is one of our dual press spellbooks. So the border kind of has this metallic blue, and mm-hmm. the um, well, the phoenix is, is in this silver color. And um, we've been doing the dual color things at conventions for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, probably over the course of the year, getting this dual press option will start showing up in our products. And most likely it'll launch with spellbooks, and then it will probably trickle down to scrolling codex, depending upon how some art redesigns go. Okay. Um, But um, also, like aside from the dual pressing, the actual foils themselves, um, this metallic color, um, this launched as well as um, this green metallic. You can even, like, um, the lighting's not great here, but you can just see the reflection off of how shiny that is. Yeah. Um, so these launched this fall, and it's it's always, like, it seems like it should be, like, a really, like, like oh, yeah, you know, get some of the foil from the foil manufacturer, right. try it out, put it on the website, but we always tend to go, things move slower because we, you know, we take our time working through that make sure we like what we're doing. And um, one of the things, again, it's really if you guys come out to a convention and see stuff, you will see stuff that doesn't exist on the website, doesn't exist anywhere else except at the convention floor, uh, including some surprises that we have in here. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a fo- this is a foil, this uh, teal blue. Um, this is brand new as of it's like this month, mm-hmm. and um, it's it's a cool option. It's yeah, you know, no, it, 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 I mean, it it's... doesn't speak to everybody, but for somebody, it's like that is the thing that matches their style, that matches their cosplay, it matches their dice. There's like something for this and. Um, because part of what we're trying to do is make things for people. It's like continuing to expand our options within reason that, you know, we, we obviously don't want to put people in a position where there's like, you know, hundreds of choices that, you know, right, too many options. I, yeah. When's the last time you shopped for paint for your house? Yeah. Well, listen, just, a, <laughs> just a couple months ago. Yeah. So I sat there and I looked through probably 20 different grays, you yeah. know, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> totally. <laughs> so, um, but um, yeah, so we're, we're continuing to expand some of our foil options, and some of these new metallics, they are, they are really sexy looking on the Yeah, I mean, they catch your eye, you know, you see this one, this kind of, this kind of Gallifreyan alchemy kind of symbol here definitely caught my eye just standing there, but I think you guys have a dragon that's done up on this down there, and it's just like, I see people just think right to it, because yeah. it... <laughs> It doesn't look like anything else that's out there, you know. And people may have seen your stuff before, and this is now pulling new people in because this is a color option that wasn't there before. Yeah, it's it, well, there's that, and the other thing too is um, we, you know, coming to a convention with with a bunch of stuff available that we've, you know, our craftsmen have made. Mm-hmm. Um, we can't custom make things at the convention, so we have to right. kind of predict ahead of hand for like what we expect people to to, to purchase and um, stuffed windows. Yeah. You know, Thursday, today, it's like there's a lot of stuff that's, a, that's available. You get to see all these new options. But um, come Saturday, a lot of these these double press spell books, it's like they're probably going to be gone. Um, and you're not going to be able to get a chance to see them. So a lot of the new foils, especially, you know, we're not going to make a ton of the ones because they're experiments for us. Sure. And so a lot of those are, have vanished by the, um, you know, by, again, probably by Saturday. So um, it's, it's cool to get that kind of feedback, too, because mm-hmm. it shows that what we're doing is something that, that people actually want. Sure. Yeah. Um, so now, if so let's say there is a particular foil that may be an experiment currently, but people really, really like it, what's the best way for them to kind of get in contact to kind of let you know, like, hey, I really love this. I'd like to see this become production sure. because I want them for myself. Yeah. We're saying about how people yeah. could request <laughs> those mistake <laughs> numbers. Number six. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we were talking about how people could request uh, or get in contact with you to tell you that they like something to hopefully make it that push through to be a production option consistently. Sure. Um, you know, again, this is kind of heralds back to like the, one of the primary like grounding moments of the company, you know, deciding that we wanted to make hex chests 
customizable for people and really makes them for people. And we've taken that attitude through all of our products. And it's important to remember that like our website is just a, that's a method of communication. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, nobody inside the company is like, you know, is like a genius on websites. And so mm-hmm. we are limited in what we're able to communicate. And um, if you see something that you're like, ooh, you know, one of the reasons the double foil pressings doesn't exist on the website is um, we don't have that structured into the item right now. Right. But if it's something that you're interested in, we want to make it for you. And so, but, you know, there's a there's an order notes section that if you leave like little requests in there and stuff like that, we love to make sure that people get the thing that they want. So if you're looking at one of these foils and you're like, that is for me, um, you know, select a foil that is something else and then leave a, leave a note and just say, hey, I really want that like that teal foil. Mm-hmm. Like that's the thing for me. And every now and then you're going to make a request that's like, oh, we can't actually do that. Right. And you'll get an email from us and be like, hey, we saw your thing. You know, we're really sorry, but we can't do it. But um, at least you know, you have the opportunity to, to tell us what you want outside of the context of just the website. And people, and again, I know we talk about this every time, but just to reiterate, these things are customizable, right? I mean, if you buy them here at a convention, great. And you can get, you can look and see all the different options. But if there's something that really speaks to you, you like this border with this thing in the inside, this art, or perhaps if you even want to try to custom create your own art within reason, obviously things need to work as far as pressing for foil. Yep. But these are all options that you have you just have to go to the website and use those order notes and make the effort to do that. And then you can really get something that's one of a kind to you and no one else will have that. That'll be yours and no one else's. Yeah. And so for specifically for custom art too, that we got enough order notes surrounding custom art that we actually created a custom art workshop. Right. And if you, it's in the footer of our website and it can sort of walks you through, you know, all of the custom spell books and stuff. Each pressing requires a custom magnesium mold to get engraved mm-hmm. for the pressing, and those are not cheap. So sure. um, this is like an expensive product to customize, and it walks you through kind of what you're able to do and what you're not able to do and what the pricing structure is for those sorts of things so artists can actually get your art turned into your gaming gear. Now, just again, not to belabor the, the custom piece, but does that include the border or is a border a separate piece if someone did want to go the custom art route? So uh, it can go either way. Okay. Um, and so if you were doing custom art and you really wanted to make sure that your border was exactly the thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, we can make a, we can have a plate etched and we can make that pressing for you. Um, if you're interested in one of the borders that you've seen, you're like, Oh, I saw a picture of something on Twitter and I love it and I want that, but I want a custom thing on the inside. We can absolutely do that request too, because we already have this border available. And, you just and then the what we need to make is we need to make the, um, the mold for your interior, I guess not your interior, but for inside the border. Right. Um, and so we can do either of those things. Okay. Yeah. So again, like I said, customizability is the name of the game, but there's going to be a cost associated with that if you're going to make a custom mold for that. But if you want to make that same thing again in the future, the mold's already there. Yeah. And it's, um, it's, this is not super clear, but especially if you're like, um, we get small companies and stuff that, they want to get a run of 10 hex chests made and sure. they want to have custom art on it. And it's like, do I need to pay custom art for each one? It's like, no, no, the, the custom art is to cover the artist time and the, um, you know, any materials that need to get made. But once that is that structure is set up, it's like, you know, that art is yours to have made as many ways as you want for that product. So, does that go, is it different if they say they get it for this, does it work for a scroll too, or you got to get different plates for each one? That's something that you definitely want to talk to our artists about because, um, you, I don't know if this is going to be obvious, but like this Elder Phoenix, we would definitely be able to structure this in a way that you could press it on your spell book and then press the same image in your scroll and then press the same image on your, on your codex. Mm-hmm. So um, we can do stuff like that. And for something like that, it's like, yeah, we can charge you one plate okay. fee and then use that for multiple things. We're, we really don't want to gouge people on this stuff, sure. but um, we also can't eat mold costs on every single product that we make so So again something to consider if you want your own custom line across all elderwood products yeah absolutely and um it's that's definitely a popular option especially with the smaller companies that do orders for us gotcha all right so there's a couple other surprises there is but we should take a quick advertising break so we can change the battery on the camera or we were saying that there are a few surprises oh yeah this is uh i got it all right this is a boring story, so you should cut this out after the interview. But um, 
at Gen Con last year, um, someone left a very small vial of dice. Uh, yes, I've smaller seen. than these minis. They're mm-hmm. like five millimeter metal dice at our booth, and they sat in our booth for a while, and nobody came back to claim them. So they sit in like our admin binder for like lost and found stuff that our booth is. But um, we uh, we've had this floating around our booth all day. It's really fun to watch people. So they'll like it's sitting around. And they'll like, oh, this is cool. And they'll open it up. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, all right. We'll find out what's in there. So I'll open that one. Oh, okay. Is this like a joke? So they'll pull this guy out. I'll open this up. It's like, all right, this is definitely a joke. What is this? And so they'll pull this little itty bitty guy out, and there are these little five millimeter dice. And this is really hard to scale. Yeah. This is a mini die. Is a mini die, and like relative size. We'll take some pictures here. Yeah, yeah, but, for sure. Um, relative, these things are like unimaginably small, and um. There's a there's a secret project in the work here, which I will spill the beans to, which is we're going to turn Ted into the D and D version of Flava Flav. Yes, and this is going to this is going to be his ring. I'm so very excited. he's going to have dice bling all over the place, and it's probably going to happen in like five years, given the rate we're working on this project. Uh, yep, <laughs> um, we'll just talk about it forever. That's fine. And With the payoff, will be great when it happens. <laughs> yes, it'll be great for probably just me, but um, that's fine. You guys can enjoy this too. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it was a it was a late night discussion at, at Pax Unplugged where this <laughs> this kind of brand, this was uh, hatched. So we'll see we'll see what happens. But I mean, I'm impressed that you were able to get that that that's a honeycombed hex chest. Let's just yeah, like that's, that's not that's that's like there's barely any room. Yeah, it's uh it's fun to do that stuff. I um I don't get enough time to to kind of have some cr- I mean, have some creative moments like that to, to actually execute new things and like play around and stuff like that. And it's really fun to take a moment to, to do that stuff and find out, you know, I always expect that was actually not the first one. Oh no. That was number two. Nice. <laughs> all right. uh, oftentimes that one's like number five. Yep. yep. Um, because you find out all the little things that you do wrong when you're actually working through these projects. And um, I feel actually very fortunate that this one went like pretty, I mean, it also has like a little bit of a progenitor with the mini hex chests. Mm-hmm. So, um, it wasn't like a far stretch, but um, literally, I think the entire thing is scaled down fifty percent. Oh wow! It's like, you know, this is about this is about two and uh, um, two and an eighth, mm-hmm. and from side to side, and that one's about one and a um, one and a sixteenth side to side, and like the dice, these are ten millimeter, these are five millimeters, so like the entire thing is just like shrunk, um, but super cute. Definitely, um, like I said, earrings to go with your hex. Yeah, you right? got your necklace. <laughs> earring set you can get a little matching set so what ted's talking about though is like if he's going to end up being the dnd flavor flav he's going to have to get his ears pierced yeah so I he guess, gets earrings yeah, and yeah. get the, you know the big chain to hang a book from yep. and we're gonna have to get that uh you know this will end up being a stamp of a clock of course of course yeah. um and i don't know how we're gonna make this spell look round but we'll get there when yeah, we get there it'll be it'll be something yeah um so Obviously, that was kind of a for fun thing, but if that was something that, again, people were clamoring for, which there seemed to be interest in it just here at the booth, do you think <laughs> yeah. that that would be something you guys would take to production, or is that just too much effort to make something so small? Um, it's, it's a little hard to say. If, you know, we obviously want to, if people are interested in us doing something, we want to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. And um, there are some technical challenges there that um, uh, would need to get solved. Sure. Um, that was, you know... If we were to produce those right now, they would be more expensive than our minis. Gotcha. Right. Um, and that's just a matter of like the equipment we have and how much time it takes to actually make these things and stuff like that. So um, we'd have to, I don't know, we'd have to look at those technical challenges and it's, it's something that we're, I don't know, we're engaged in and, and like doing as a company. But um, I, I could see like a little micro run of those, no pun intended. Um, and you need to do the dice too then. Yeah, a l- another little micro run of those. Uh, but because I think those only come in like gold and silver. I've never seen them in anything but those two base. And I've se- I've twice as many colors as I've seen them in. So oh yeah. Oh, I have-, I have a set of silver ones at home. Really? Yeah. I have I've seen three sets of those in my life. This is one of them. And all of them have been gold. Yeah, they do. So. I've seen them. It was at like a local comic shop. We're getting off topic. But, all right, whatever. Um, <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah. So. We talked about those cool things, new foils, dice. What else, what kind of, what is on the horizon? What's the next step for Elderwood? Do you have an idea or is that all behind the scenes? We can't talk about that. Um, 
there's there's some stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Um, I know we talked last time um, about a lot of what we've been focusing on is just company development. Um, sure. We've just been trying to make sure that we're able to meet customer needs and Which demands. Is, yeah, and um, yeah, you know, we it's I, we usually take about a. Uh, I think our average time to deliver is about three weeks right now, mm-hmm. and um, you know that has varied during, at peak times of production. You know where demand is really high. Sorry, not peak times of production. Peak times of demand. Sure. Um, we've had to extend our that up to like eight weeks for people because okay. we're just you know we're trying as hard as we can to get as much made as possible, and we're just not quite there. And so a lot of this last year has been focusing on making sure that we're able to meet customer demands. And um, I know everybody in our shop is really looking forward to. Um, after PAX East, we get like a little bit of lull with the convention schedule sure. where we can start getting kept, we can get caught up, we can get ahead of this thing, um, and we can really work to be on top of those orders. My dream is to like have this kind of thing where it's like, yeah, if you put in an order and it's like, that gets, that gets, doesn't go into a queue. It gets seen like immediately, you know, Craftsman's on it that day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that goes in the mail within, you know, within the week. Um, and, um, it, it may be about a couple of years till we get there, but I would really sure. like to see the company get there. And I know that's an exciting new product. That's that a, is more, uh, at least from my perspective, I think that that's probably the most exciting product that one could have. Cause everybody, you go through the effort of building one of these things and it looks so cool and you want to get it. Like, I, I'm sure there's tons of people who are like, they built this on Monday and they got a game on Saturday and they'd love to have it for that game, but they don't understand the amount of effort that goes into just getting all this stuff with the size of the production team and just the logistics of possibly making custom art and all this stuff. It's not something that's going to come together in six days. Yeah. And, um, that's, you know, the, the reality of the situation is, is, um, has consistently been far from where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, I feel really fortunate that, you know, everybody that we have who works at Elderwood, like we're all on the same page. We're all in it together as a team. We're like trying to make sure that we're balancing all of the needs of our customers. Um, I know, I know we can get a spell book if all the parts are ready. You know, there's nothing special that needs to happen. We, you know, we've got everything available. Um, we can get a spell book out in about three days. Oh wow! Um, without an issue, but the the trouble is, you know, there's a you know there's a queue of these things, and so, you know. Yeah. One, you know, one leather doesn't get seen and processed one at a time. It goes through with a bunch of others, and you know that process takes a couple of days for to, to work through all of them. And those go to the next stage where somebody in the assembly will start like actually putting the the interior of the box together. Mm-hmm. And because all of those things have like you know they're they happen in groups because okay. we're not handling a single customer order; we're handling lots at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the reality of that puts everything into these queues, and we're really working hard as a team to to. Um, try and level the production and try to make sure that we are being as fast and efficient as possible so that we can get things out to customers faster and faster. And it's, um, again, it's one of those things, it really makes my heart flutter to try and do that. Sure, and yeah, I don't yeah. know what it is about my personality that makes that really exciting to me, but um, I feel really, really fortunate that the rest of the team is all they've got my back on this and everybody else is interested in doing this too. So yeah, I, I, and I, I agree, right? I think getting, working, you know, internally developing that process to get stuff out as fast and efficient as possible. And then also getting, delivering what people want to them sooner. While it doesn't, it's not flashy, right? It's not like a, you know, a cool new foil or this brand new product. People are ultimately going to be more thankful for that than they are going to be for, you know, you guys churning out a new product every other week. And not for nothing, that's not a good thing because, like, right now you've got a solid staple of products that are out there that people can get, and that's great. But, like, if you – like, we kind of talked about it before. If you have 100 different foils, 50 different leathers, and 10 different products to put it on – People get, you know, choice fatigue. Like they don't know what they want to do. They can't decide what they want to get. And then they just, they'll op- they'll go home after work. They'll sit down. They'll open up their phone or their computer. And they say, what am I going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get one of these products for my game. And they're going to look at all the product options and they're going to start clicking through them. And eventually they're just going to get tired and they're going to go to sleep. And that window stayed open and they never picked. And they just yeah. start the whole thing over the next day. Yep. So going, so having a ton of products out all the time isn't necessarily the best thing, but providing that to people faster, I think that's key. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Ted. And mm-hmm. um, I, I personally would agree with that from my own shopping experience, but I also know I'm, 
I'm probably like one of the worst shoppers personally. <laughs> I walk in to get some Oreos and find out there's like 17 kinds and then I get a little confused and I end up with a decision that I don't feel like I can make and then I walk out of the store and yep, yep. kind of leave like, hmm, I felt like I was in there to get something. Yep. Um, so, but, um, and th- there's actually one other facet of this, which we're, uh, we've been talking about for, uh, for a year now mm-hmm. and we're finally starting to lay some groundwork. Um, and it's just, it, T- kind of ties into this too of the um, getting things done faster, more efficient, and um, we're slowly. I think that, again, we're not web wizards, so sure. um, you know we're, we're trying to figure out how to work with the right people to get this done. But we'd really love to get a system set up like um, kind of like Domino's Pizza, oh, like a tracker, a tracker where like you know when somebody works on your spell book, you, you know, know you can go check in on that and be like, oh, it looks like you know John started your spell book assembly today. And that would be, um, cool. and you know, that's just a, that's a, again, it's not a, it's not a sexy flashy new product, but it's something well, that even if you're helps, not, it just helps us stay organized on these things and helps us, helps the customers feel like they're engaged in the process more in a way that we want, you know, we really want you to be, I wish I could write handy emails to everybody every day, giving them an update. And that's just, you know, if we did that, the delivery times go to from four weeks to four months. Right. So, um, so that's why we can't do that stuff, but we'd like to get there. That would be, again, and especially, I, I think, obviously, like we said, communication is key, right? If it can be faster and it's, you know, you're getting it four days later, fantastic. But if it is going to take three weeks and you did have something like that where people can come in and check in, it's just like how everybody, when they order something and they get a tracking number and they just got it, even though they know it's not going to be there, they're still going to go check to see. And it's not there and it's not available for tracking yet, but they want to know. And that will provide them that option that they're like, okay, it's going to take a little while, but look, I know John's working on my spellbook right now. That would be very cool. Again, not a flashy new product, but again, things that people will want. They don't know they want it, but then when they have it, they're not going to want to be without it. Yeah. This is kind of an aside, but it was wild. I was in um, New York uh, for Toy Fair, Mm -hmm. and my cousin lives in New York, and so I usually stay a couple days with her to hang out. Sure. um, She's happy to host me. And one of the days I was with her, she got a package, and she opens it up. She's like, oh, my God, I ordered this this morning. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, that was wild that, like, the, you know, the system is that efficient to be able to get somebody their, you know, their delivery that fast. Mm-hmm. So, we live in a world of instant gratification now with free two-day shipping, free same-day shipping. It is so, wild. Yeah. So, but. yeah. So anything else you want to tell the people about Elderwood Academy or things going on? Uh, before we wrap this interview up for probably the last the last time for this convention. We'll see. We may come think of something else afterwards. <laughs> no, I, you know, I really appreciate, you know, the entire gaming industry is really wonderful to be, to be a part of. Um, the other companies that we work with are fantastic. Um, all of the customers, whether you're one of our customers or somebody else's customer or you're just stopping in to say hello, um, I, it's really like, it's such a wonderful group of people. And, um, you know, we try to say it as much as we can, but we really appreciate uh, being a part of this community and being welcomed and supported. So, um, anyways, for all of you watching, like, thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again for the interview. Uh, I'm going to try to get this out before the con's over so people can come and Woo! make it to the, to the booth. So, <laughs> thanks, guys. I'll see you at the next interview. Um, I'll have a link in the description at elderwoodacademy.com so you guys can go check out, maybe make your own products for yourself. Cool. Thank all you. All right.